Two is one and one is none. What does that mean? That means that if you have two of something and one breaks, you still have one. If you only have one of something and that breaks, you have none. My newer Whirlpool has finally exhibited its first issue. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in a bit. I need a full tub of water first before anything is going to happen. I'll tell you the issue as it happens. So once I get a full tub and it starts aggulating, we'll uh, show you the problem. And by the way, spoiler, it's not agitator dorm. Because they're working fine. So it's not the aggulator dogs, and it has nothing to do with aggulation because that's working perfectly fine as well. So that leaves drain and spin to be the problem. I'm going to wait until it goes to drain. Now, because I'm just on the rinse cycle, this may not have enough agitation to not slip into spin, so it may slip into spin. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'll show you the problem because that is with draining. And again, even if it slips into spin, that is not part of the problem. I have underneath the sink open where the sump bucket is. This is not going to be a video on how to change the drain pump in the washer. I don't know. That may be the problem. It may not. I haven't figured that out yet. I will eventually. Uh, but I have that open so you can see and that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to work my way back and properly diagnose the issue before I go and throw parts at it. Okay, agulation has just stopped. Listen carefully. Again, if it goes into spin, disregard. Listen carefully when it starts. which will be any day now, literally. The suspense, ladies and gentlemen. It slipped into spin. You hear all that churning and that stream of water out of my anti-drain back something or other? And it's a pretty strong stream at that. So again, disregard the fact that it slipped into spin. We're just going to wait here, let it do its thing. We're coming up to the magic line in the sump bucket. which doesn't seem to be working. No, it's going. So the sump pump is working fine. It drained right down. Washer's still emptying, so everything seems normal. It's draining. Everything's good. Water's going down. Everything is doing what it's supposed to. But yes, there is a problem. We're going to have to wait and see if it manifests. We're still draining, still have that stream which has weakened a bit. Now what the washer is going to do, it doesn't know it slipped into spin. It thinks it's doing a neutral drain and that's all fine and good. But normally, after the neutral drain, approximately two minutes, it stops. Look at that. There's still water there. So it's not draining fully. Now, it's going to start back up in a moment. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Do you hear all that churning? And again, that strong stream is not really normal. It should theoretically bypass that. 
for the most part as was originally set up but in time I've been noticing this and eventually the washer is going to finish draining out through the spin and the phone's ringing now it's done the washer is now devoid of water and is working fine and this normally wouldn't pose an issue except that it's draining slowly that would tend to indicate that the drain is somehow occluded somewhere that's a fancy term that means blocked um, could it be the drain pump? yes it can could it be a broken vein on the pump inside? absolutely could the hose coming out or the one from the wash tub going into it be occluded? That's possible. Could it be the drain hose itself? Sure could. Or could it be where it goes into this mess here? Based on the fact that I have a very strong stream, now for those of you who missed that video, which was maybe nine, ten years ago, maybe more than that now, yeah, a good ten, maybe even eleven or twelve. Anyway, it's a long time. Uh, I had uh, cobbled this together and the hose that's coming out basically I have a piece of like one and five eighths inch tubing that I made a hole in and put this in and that is there as an air gap this is completely you know plumber code approved and all that I, I, I read up on that actually I just kind of invented this on the whim and it, it seemed to work so yeah, uh, that's kind of the deal. But um, maybe I've been a bad boy. If we take a look in here, there's lint and bad news. And it's, it's looking a bit worse for wear. The brownness and all that, yeah, it's, it's stagnant water that sits. And that's how the house was designed. And there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, the bucket and the sump pump in it work perfectly fine, so we know that's good. The other washer is working fine, so there's your two is one and one is none. So my goal is to cut the cable ties, of which there are one or maybe two. There's definitely one here. There's one up here, which is actually for the AC condensate drain might be able to just see it there and hopefully I can wiggle that off of the drain hose that's on there quite a ways but the first thing I'm going to do before anything is go in here and sort of muck out what I can in there I think that's going to be the first start I might even get lucky and it's possible that maybe this drain stack so to speak has shifted I don't know because I didn't review the old videos for some reason uh, maybe it shifted down and the drain tube way down in there is too close to the bottom and that is impeding the flow. By eliminating all of this I can test it and verify that I have proper flow which would be evidenced by the washer draining properly which also would prove that the washer has nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to get busy here for a while and do what I can do. Uh, it's not going to look good but it should look a little better than it does now by the time I'm done. Don't expect any miracles, because I sure don't, and it ain't gonna be anywhere near that. So I'll get busy with that and check in sometime later. Oh yeah, look at all that. That's like lint and matted cat fur. The black thing is the glove I was wearing. It's better-er, but again, I told you it's not gonna look much different. So I mucked all that out. One other thing, hopefully the camera will get in here. There's the sump pump. You see that ring on top of it? And it's very, very, very rusty. All of that matted stuff was on top of that. And I guess the wetness of it staying there helped to promote rust. Not a good thing. But anyway, that's that. So 
Right now I'm refilling the washer for a test because I did find something. And I'm also letting the sink run. You might see in the hose here water coming down. And that is to refill this because what I did was I ran this till the sump pump came on and then held the float up so it would drain further down than it normally does. Well, when it does that, it ends up sucking air and then has to kind of purge the air in itself, send it up the line and send it out. But what I, uh, so that's why I'm running the sink. This way it'll fill it up and let the uh, pump do a normal cycle and get back in sync, if you will. What I did find was the drain for the washer on the right of the drain stack was pointing almost straight down at the bottom of the bucket with a gap of maybe like that much and that's not proper. Doing that is definitely going to impede flow. I don't care how much pressure is behind it, it's attenuating the flow. So perhaps when I built this, I was a little overzealous in the length of that hose. I did all of this because I wanted the washer drains to go into the water so it didn't sound like a thousand Mexicans taking a piss at the same time. That was the phrase I used 10, 12 years ago. So I figured uh, that the more I have it in the water, the less it would do. So uh, what I did find was, or what I remembered at least, was that I did not have it pointing straight down, but rather kind of firing toward the back of the bucket. So I bent that hose out of the way. Uh, kind of hard to tell. You might be able to just see it there that it's kind of pointing toward the rear now instead of going straight down like it was. So my hunch so far, which may certainly be incorrect, is that it shifted somehow, maybe over time, I, I don't know, and that's maybe what caused it. So we're going to find out in a couple of minutes. I'm going to find out along with you when that happens. I'm going to come back as soon as the sink fills up enough water in here to trigger the pump. So we'll wait for that so this way it'll kind of resynchronize. There we go. Just started. Nothing. It's continuing to fill. Don't know if you can see that. And there we go, starting going down. And there we are. That'll empty out. And that is now resynchronized. The reason, of course, I did that was I didn't want the washer to send its quote unquote galosh of water out uh, at one time and the pump not being able to pump. I didn't want to risk an overflow, so this way I avoided that potential situation. So we are now refilling for another cycle, and yes, I have to go full boat on this, full tub, each time, because that's where the problem is manifested, rather than a smaller load. If there's less water, it would be able to purge it, even with some sort of an occlusion. So we have to wait for that to go, and then go to spin, or drain, I should say. But uh, that hose definitely has been pushed back. I'm thinking it shifted how, why, where, when. I don't know. Can I shore it up some? Mm, yeah, probably another cable tie or two. Well, we'll have to see. <laughs> the correct fix would be to undo this clamp right over here and pull it off, shorten the hose slightly, maybe an inch, and put it all back if this is indeed the problem. There may be more of an occlusion within the hose. I really don't know. I have no idea. The other washer doesn't seem to have any problem. We'll be able to see if that hose moves when it goes to drain, so we're going to find out in just a few moments whether or not that was the fix, so stand by. 
here's the physics demonstration for this video. Imagine that this were not just a cap as you see it, but this would represent the hose. And this part closing this off is not there. So imagine that this is just a hose like that. Now, if it's sitting as hard as it can against the bottom, will water leak out if it's under pressure? Sure, because it has pressure behind it. So because it's not making a perfect seal, it'll be able to leak. What if it's up this much? Can water get out? Yeah, a lot better than before. But is that going to quite do it? I don't know. But what if I tilt it this way? I'll turn it like that. See how much more can come out like that if it's on an angle? So that's why I'm thinking that may work. I do not know. The washer is ready to spin. I stopped it just in time and it'll start up in just a moment when I kick power back on and the timer says, yeah, go. So we'll open that back up and in a few moments, we're going to see if that hose wants to move. I may not have moved it enough. I'm definitely going to go back in there and see what I can do. It may need to even come down. Ah, look at that. Perfect. That should do it. Because look, where's that stream of water coming out of there? Nothing. Nothing at all. Absolutely perfect. That's draining, I don't know if you can tell, that's draining a hell of a lot faster than before. There you go. Nice. Oh, that's real nice. So that's going to drain out. There's floaties and all kinds of, yeah, I got to, I got to let this chooch a bit to get whatever stuff I, you know, that fell in there when I was peeling everything off. It was not a fun job. So we should get, I don't know where the washer is in relation to that. Get up. This shit like flaking off the side. You know, I can go in there with a pressure washer and make a mess out of the basement. Should pump again. There he goes. How we doing? Oh, hello. I think this might be it. This might do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, go for it. You got it. You got it. Right on. There it is. Cavitated. It's empty and devoid of water. Has not even stopped to go into spin yet. Absolutely 100% perfect. This is pretty much going to remain stagnant at this point, and uh, it'll go into spin and do its thing. And that pretty much was the repair, just moving that hose. Now, like I said, I need to go back in there and find out how and why it moved, if it'll move back, or if it was just really a fluke after 10 years, or what. Um, if it does move back, then the symptom is going to be the same as I had where it wouldn't drain all the water. So it's doing its uh, spin drain, uh, spin um, spray rinse, rather, final whatever you want to call it. You can see water in that little tube. That's okay. It may squirt out of there. That was normal that it always did. So that's okay. It looks like it's working. Let me go dig around in there some more and see what I can find. Doing pump reset number two. Sink is running and you can see the bubbles because obviously that's, there's air coming down there as well. That's normal and it should go to drain in just a moment. There it is. Again, it has to, so some bubbles there, more floating stuff. That's great. Hopefully the pump will be able to pick some of that up and send it out. There he goes. I also went in here. Let me shut the sink. Pardon me just a moment. There we are. I went in there with the gloves again. And I kind of scraped at the sides a bit. The upper part I'm not really concerned about. 
but you could see the black ring that's there. That was all covered with stuff before. You hear water running, and that's because I have the machine on. You see steam, because now I'm running hot water, because when I test things, I test them extraordinarily thoroughly for every possible situation and circumstance. Hot water can make that hose more pliable and may cause it to move. I did go back in there and check on that and I have no idea how it was able to move to begin with. It definitely was pointing almost at the bottom of the barrel, if you will. And I moved it back and it, it took some took some pressure to do that. It's now pointing almost directly at the back wall, but because it's only bent, you know, maybe 11 degrees or so, uh, it, it can't face it. And that is allowing uh, more than enough water to get out without any problem. I have no idea how it moved. I'm only thinking maybe the hot water is going to do it. So we're going to find out as a final test with that. And um, it's rock solid right now. There's nothing to shore up or do. It, it, it's, it's very odd that this even occurred as it is. I guess what I could do if I had to would be to cable tie the two washer drains together in back of the drain stack. So in other words, run a cable tie in around the drain stack back out and around and that'll kind of keep them pointing toward the back of the bucket. So stand by for another test this time with hot water. So while we're waiting I'll tell you more about uh, what I had planned. I figured I'd ha probably have to take that hose off so I got my whack me drill out and I have these extensions that are they are wobble extensions and that actually would allow me to get in there. I even had a socket ready for that hose clamp. The only problem was I do not have the tools to interface this with the drill. That is to say I don't have them in this box. They only give you a uh, screwdriver bit thing. Or maybe I'm mistaken on that. Let's take a look. Yeah, I actually do have it in here. This is the piece that I would need. Let's see if I could pull it out for a second. I need two hands. Yep, there it is. I did have it. I just didn't look hard enough. That'll plug into there. And then the rest of the extensions and the socket. And with all of that wobble in there, yep, it definitely would have worked. Because it's at such an odd angle. Um, I easily could have used the screwdriver. I just thought it would be a lot easier to loosen it and maybe retighten it most of the way. But you know me, I don't use a drill for anything other than actually drilling a hole, driving screws and bolts and that. Really not my style. I do it all by hand so I can monitor the proper torque along the way. So that's all I would have used it for. Just like changing tires on a car. I don't care if a tire shop uses the gun to get them off. I mean, that's Sorry to use the phrase, that's what it's there for. <laughs> but um, putting them back on, if you want to just start them by hand and just run them up just till and then stop and then torque them down by hand, I'm cool with that. It's a time saver is what it is. That's perfectly fine. But to get on that thing with that air impact and go da -da 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 -da, you know, and run it all the way down, way too much torque. So now we're going to wait and see, because it's going to drain, and see if the hot water is going to do anything to that hose. The bubbles are normal. We have no stream of water. That's definitely moving. There's floaties, like I said. They'll work themselves out or redeposit elsewhere. Drain in a moment. There he goes. 
hose is still pointing toward the back. Yes, it does get a little sound. That's okay. It's just nowhere near as bad as what it is. And we should uh, pump again in a moment. Getting there. It's hard to see with the steam. But like I said, I need to test this to the point where I am satisfied that this problem will not recur, at least in the near future. Hose is exactly where I left it. Getting hard to see with the steam, but we're getting into the home stretch of drain here. There we go. Going right down. That's it. We did it. We're good. It's fixed. So what may have appeared to have been a washer drain pump problem wasn't a washer drain pump problem at all. It was an occluded drain, not blocked by stuff in it, but by being blocked off at the end. Now, again, this is kind of a hack job plumbing type thing. Like I said, it meets all plumbing codes, as far as I'm concerned, because it works. And um, I designed all of this. And it's absolutely been impeccable the entire time that this has been in service since 2010. So I guess 12 years that I've had this set up here approximately 12, 13 years now. It's been working absolutely perfectly each and every time. And just now, for no reason, did that happen. What I'm most surprised about is that this was not an October fail. This would have been a prime, prime October fail. And yet, it didn't happen in October. And that makes it more palatable. I didn't look forward to this because I didn't know what I was going to find. I guess that kind of starts off any, any job like that. You kind of really don't know what you're up against until it happens. Uh, that was it. So... It ended up working out real nice. No cost for repairs. That's good. Still steam chooching in there. And that. So uh, that's nice. One other thing is the two moral lessons from this video. One, as we had discussed before, two is one and one is none. That's important, and that's why there's two washers, two dryers, two dishwashers, all that kind of stuff. There's backups for everything, because you never know. And if this were my only washing machine, and this were the problem, I now had an emergency on my hands. I can't do laundry until it's fixed, or maybe I would have gotten away with doing small loads, and who knows if it would have gotten worse. We don't know. But the other thing is to be prepared. That's the second one. Now, I'm not fully prepared for this because I may have needed a drain pump depending on what the actual problem was. Um, one thing I did do, as shown before, is the Wacomy drill and the extensions and all that. I had that here ready to go and did not end up needing to use it. I also have over here a bag of washer agitator dogs. There's some yellow ones which are interesting and these are vacuum sealed. Why? I don't know. I just thought it might have been a good idea to do that. These yellow ones have been around for a long time and maybe the plastic just yellows with age. Maybe it has to do with exposure to oxygen. So I said let me vacuum seal it and why I have so many is because a certain XJO81X needed a set of agitator dogs and um, I looked online and found that a big pack of I think 48 of them was something like six bucks or I can get a set of four for six bucks. 
what's the or I think it was eight dollars for 48 of them and six dollars for four what's the better buy yeah I could have thrown away two bucks but I have these on hand in the event that I need to replace them uh, again will the yellow ones work just as well maybe are they dried out quite possibly could they have been made by a, a different manufacturer and different kind of plastic absolutely that may be why I don't know should I have a spare drain pump here you bet your bippy I definitely should but I don't and that is a potential downfall on my part because what if I need one well fortunately in this day and age we have Amazon and uh, you know I can have one in a couple days and meanwhile two is one and one is none so I still have the ability to do laundry if that were to happen so this has been resolved I'm very happy about that it was a very simple and easy resolution no tools required just required getting in this bucket and seeing what was going on it ended up working out in my favor something that probably wouldn't have happened in October but that is going to wrap up this repair simple easy and wasn't exactly a problem per se but certainly manifested I also now realized that this whole setup that I have here also includes a warning device which we saw earlier with that stream of water coming down real hard that clued me in that it was probably occluded somewhere beyond that point right there and that is exactly what I found so diagnosing the problem first instead of throwing parts at it is always the best way to go I diagnosed this without looking at it I diagnosed it over the, this happened like a couple days ago and I got time now to look at it so my theory was that that was going to be the problem and indeed it was a problem downstream of that so this whole setup which admits air there's going to be a link in the prescription to the original video on this if I can find it uh, I'm sure I can uh, but anyway um, this now acts as a warning device because you heard that before that definitely was not correct and not the way it was originally designed so therefore there was a built-in warning device with this as well which is even extra cool but it's all resolved now I'm really happy I don't have to tear apart the machine there's no problem replacing the pump it's just access here limited access but uh, you know these are these Whirlpool direct drives are like Toyotas it's not that they don't break it's that they break a lot less often than another machine might have same thing with cars again Toyotas are known for their reliability it's not that they don't break they certainly do and can have catastrophic failures just like any other car but the likelihood of that is a lot less and for all of those who buy high mileage models and then things start breaking it's an old car things are gonna break on an old car and the likelihood of it happening is higher these are older machines but again still really well designed and again it was no failure of the machine at all but rather this something I guess I had overlooked in setting this up should I have made that hose a little shorter yes am I gonna correct it now no because I don't see a problem with it really and I know the symptoms and I have a warning signal if it happens but anyway that's enough babbling a nice quick easy repair if not a bit of a dirty repair but I had gloves so it wasn't all that bad that's gonna wrap this up I thank you so kindly for watching and I really appreciate it make sure you click like Make sure you click subscribe and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.